My name is Captain Ashley Kessler. I'm on the teaching staff at San Jacinto College at the Maritime Technology and Training Center campus here in Houston, Texas. This is part five of my series of radar plotting. This is on multiple contacts. The objectives for multiple contacts, at the end of this presentation, you will be able to identify the danger contact. Two, demonstrate and explain how to maneuver against multiple contacts by de determining a new course. And third, demonstrate and explain how to maneuver against multiple contacts by de determining a new speed. Let's learn how to change course on multiple contacts. The first thing we have to do is we have to do some type of situational assessment to identify the danger contact the one we have to maneuver against first. Second, we're going to find that new course. Our own ship is going to have a required CPA of two nautical miles, and our execution point, our MX, is going to be at 12 minutes. Once we find that new course for the danger contact, we're going to apply that same course to contact Bravo to find the new CPA and bearing a CPA. MX will remain at 12 minutes. So I have two vessels here. We have contact A up to the northeast. Contact A is heading west-northwest. Their relative motion line is going to take our stern by approximately one mile. The time to closest point of approach is going to be approximately 34 minutes. And contact alpha is going to be the stand-on vessel. Contact Bravo's relative motion line is also taking our stern and their time to closest point of approach is at 24 minutes, but they're also going to be the giveaway vessel. So we're hoping they're gonna follow the rules and they're gonna give way. So I'm gonna choose contact alpha as my danger target. I'm going to find a new course to steer in order to open up my CPA by two miles. Then I'm gonna apply that same course change to contact Bravo. So I wanna draw a new relative motion line from MX to my required CPA of two miles. I'm going to transfer MX to M06. Draw that out to starboard since we're going to turn to starboard. I'm going to get my compass. I'm going to stab E and the swing R00 to starboard. And I will get an R prime. My original course was from E to R00. My new course is going to be from E to R prime. To find that new course, we're going to parallel that to the middle of the plotting sheet. And we're going to find out that course is going to be 038 degrees. So when contact A tracks down this relative motion line, they get the MX at 12 minutes. I'm going to alter course from due north to 038 degrees. Then they will fall ahead of me by two nautical miles. I now have to do what I did on my own ship to every other contact I have on my plotting sheet. So I have to apply this 038 degree course change to contact Bravo. So I want to draw the 038 degree course change from E. If you know the course, you go to E and let's change course. So we're going to get our compass. We're going to stab E, swing R00 to starboard and we'll get an R prime. If you change course on the relative motion radar, you change the relative motion. The old relative motion was R00 to M06. The new relative motion line is going to be from R prime to M06. Then I can parallel that down to MX, and I can get a new CPA and a bearing. So if I did this 038 course change on both vessels, on contact alpha, my danger target, I will be able to maintain my required CPA. On contact Bravo, I open up my CPA from one mile to just a little under four miles, bearing 270. So once you do a course change or a speed change on one contact, you have to do it on all the contacts on your plotting sheet.
This time we're going to do a speed change on the multiple contacts. Maybe we cannot change course because of traffic or maybe the show areas off to our starboard side does not allow us to alter course to starboard. So we're going to own ship is going to slow to 10 knots. We still have our required CPA of two nautical miles. The execution point is still going to be 12 minutes. We're going to slow to 10 knots on contact B to find the new CPA and bearing and MX is still going to be 12 minutes. So we have the same two contacts we had for the speed change, but this time we want what to slow to 10 knots. So over on the 12 mile scale, we're going to measure 10 knots. Then we're going to parallel this 10 knots to our speed vector, our E to R, and we're going to slow from 20 knots to 10 knots. And that's going to be an R prime. If I change speed on the relative motion rater, I'm going to change relative motion. The old relative motion was from R00 to M06. The new relative motion is going to be from R prime to M06. And I can parallel down to MX at 12 minutes. And I will open up my CPA to my required 2 miles CPA. If I do a speed change on one contact, I have to do it on all the contacts. So I'm applying the same 12 knot speed change to contact Bravo. So I'm going to parallel that 12 knots to E and I get an R prime. The old relative motion was R00 to M06. The new one is R prime to M06. Then I parallel that down to MX and this will not work for me at all because now instead of crossing my stern by one mile, now he's going to be crossing my bow by one mile. I can only hope that he will follow the rules on rule 16 and he will actually give way and take my stern so I don't have to do some more situational assessment in this situation. To review our objectives for these multiple contacts, first we identified the danger contact. We demonstrate and explain how to maneuver against the multiple contact by determining a new course. Then finally, third, we demonstrate and explain how to maneuver against multiple contacts by determining a new speed. If you have any comments on this video, you can write me at my campus email at ashley.kessler at sjcd.edu.